ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Josephine Scriver to the Castellani Show! Thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming, Josephine. It's such an honor to have you here. You're such a beautiful human. Thank you for coming. Oh my God, it's so fun and I'm so excited to be here. And I'm so proud of you for having this show. This is going to be so fun. Tell me about your upbringing. I'm sure that's what shaped you into the beautiful human you are. I mean, it's a huge part of who I am growing up in an LGBTQIA plus family and having both my parents being gay was just, it just shaped who I was. It wasn't, growing up, it was not weird. It was not different because I think most of my classmates actually had like kind of the divorce lifestyle because both my mom and my dad is gay. So I was in like two different households and it was just, I also think I was really lucky growing up in Copenhagen. It's a very open-minded place. It wasn't honestly till I moved to America that I realized, oh, people don't always agree with this kind of lifestyle. This is very different for a lot of people. But it really just made me meet people with a whole open attitude and just making sure that, hey, love is what's the most important. Families are so different, but they don't have to be like mom, dad, white picket fence and two kids. Of course. What really makes a family is love. And I think I really was taught that at an early age. That's beautiful. Do they know what you do? Like you're going to all these red <laughs> carpets and you're doing photo shoots. Do they understand? Do they get it? I mean, I even had a hard time in the beginning of all this trying to understand the fashion industry because growing up, you know, I was a tomboy. Fashion wasn't really the biggest thing. Like I remember the first time I got an L cover. My mom was like, oh, that's interesting. So you're shooting for the electric company? And I go, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's an actual magazine. We always had to compare it to sport. This job means that I got to sit on the bench at the soccer game. Oh, now I'm on the national team. Oh, I'm a starting player. So oh I gosh. had to like translate what the job meant into sports so we could like understand the levels I was getting to. How would you explain to your mom like what is the Met Gala, for example? I would say for our industry, it's got to be the closest thing to like an Oscar or like getting like an Emmy or all these. Like it's such a huge moment and being invited to the Met Ball is like anyone in the fashion industry's biggest dream. It's such a like magical moment. How did you land it from soccer, <laughs> on sports and a very unconventional family into being a supermodel? I have one of those stories that I was on a soccer trip exchange program. I was living at home and we got to go to America for this exchange, exchange like soccer tournament. And I was stopped on the street. I was one of those people that somebody just walked up to me and go, hey, you should model, which I first thought was kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, it turns into, I was like, okay, let me try it. This is more fun than I had a cleaning job at that time to get pocket money. Started like doing castings and all of a sudden I was flying to New York to do a show season and never really moved home. And since you started your career, you've accomplished almost everything you could accomplish as a model. You were a Victoria's Secret angel. Yes. You are the face of a beauty brand. Mm -hmm. You're also the cover of so many magazines all over the world. I'm sure you lost count of how many. <laughs> yeah, I was dying the other day. I was like, ah. You just recently featured on the iconic Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. Swimsuit magazine. What's the next thing you want to accomplish, if there is anything to accomplish in the modeling <laughs> industry? Because I feel like you're almost an Oscar winner in the fashion world. Oh, thank you. Honestly, I am so, so grateful for how my career turned out. I couldn't... I mean, I remember when I sat down with the agency and I was like, well, these are the things I would like. They're like, dream big, like dream as big as you can. And I got to live that dream out. I can't believe that I'm sitting here today. So for me, I think from here on out, like taking that platform I built, not only going into more business style, but also like using my voice to change the world, to hopefully by say, telling my story, like changing some few attitudes or at least like educating people a little bit. So hopefully I don't have need people to agree with me, but I would love for people to just respect and tolerate it. And then I'm chasing a Forbes cover. I want to be good enough in business that I can get a Forbes cover. Okay, Forbes, you heard you heard <laughs> you saying. But you have a very hectic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. How do you manage to find time for yourself, for your family, for your parents that you love so much yeah. and not get trapped into the work routine? Before this big break in the world, it was like nonstop all over. Sometimes prioritizing like, hey, your mental health sometimes has to overrule the next job had an amazing team who even sometimes had to tell me, hey, are you good? Like, slow down. It's okay. And like, 
are we still, are you still cool with this? And it's been such a teamwork. My mom checking in on me, uh, my friends, my agents, and everybody having the respect that like, I would never just say no, but if I'm at the point, I'm like, hey, I have like two more jobs in me and then I need a break. And I think people from the beginning have been so good about that. And that has really helped me a lot. And then just zoning out on flights. And luckily I love being by myself. It's so important to have a team that supports you and understands mm -hmm. your limits. And even with Simone Biles now stepping oh, back, it's a huge example for us. Because if she, as an athlete, needs to step back. Oh my God. It was, I thought that was, her doing that was so inspiring because I think the hardest thing when you, I'm so competitive with myself, I'm such a perfectionist and I just want to do my best that the word no is so hard because you feel like a slight failure sometimes if you can't make the next job or like, what did that opportunity like is dropped from you? And the fact that she was able to in the Olympics be like, this is not okay for me today. I have to step back. I have to put my health and well-being on top, I think it's gonna hopefully inspire so many people to listen to what's going on inside because we're of no use if we burn out. We're of no use if you hurt ourselves. So the the no's along the way will make sure you have a long lasting career in whatever you decide to. A historic moment, Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Magazine, which you recently featured, where the cover is a transgender woman of yeah. color. How do you feel about it? Do you think there is still things to change? There is still work to do when it comes to change the modeling industry and making it more equal for everybody? I think it's so, been so inspiring seeing from where I started in the industry to what it's now finally representing and seeing how open and welcoming it's becoming and seeing a black transgender woman on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I mean, I was jumping up with doubt. I was like, Finally, there's enough role models out there that because there's so many kids who need someone to look up to. We all want to feel special. We all want to feel like we can dream big. But if you've never seen yourself represented, how are you supposed to even be able to have those kind of like goals in your life? And it's just so inspiring. And I feel so grateful to be able to be part of a magazine like that. I mean, this is literally history. And I can like look back and be like, I was part of that, which is amazing. And it's just, it's been so cool seeing a transition into being able to share these platforms with so many people and so many different voices and so many different personalities and backgrounds and sexualities and identifications and just it's been super inspiring. I still think we have so many leeway to go, but I think we're on a very right track. Is there anything else that you that you've over, overcome in life? Something personal, maybe a struggle that you never talked about before, but you'd like to share now? I just think for me, I think growing is a big change. And I think people saying like, oh, we stay the same is a big misconception. I think we all should grow as humans. And as open-minded as I am with coming from an LGBTQIA plus family, there's still things I have to learn. And I think if you're willing to go out there and open up your heart and your mind for people and willing to have these conversation and not being afraid of like making mistakes, even though they get a little judged lately, but I really hope that if we all are a little bit more educational to each other, it would help a lot because I think as a young girl, I was so like serious about everything. Everything was so one, it was this way or the highway, like, and just be like, hey, the world is a lot, it's not so black and white. It's a lot more this. And I think I would tell my younger self to be a little bit less harsh on myself and like a little bit more open-minded because even I feel like I've done a lot I have so much more to go and have so many ways to grow that I'm still working on every day. That's amazing. Joe, thank you so much thank for you. coming on my show. You're such a special guest to me. Like I met you when I first moved to LA and I was already so inspired by you, but then meeting you in person, you were just so nice to me. And thank you. I was like, you know, I, that's how I want to be. I want to be like her, like Jasmine Tooks as well, like your, uh, your best friend. And it's so crazy to have you on my show. Oh my God, ABC I am so proud of you. Seeing like, um, like you're saying a few years ago. I had this no idea so cool. that, that was gonna happen, <laughs> that, but you always treated me so nicely, not knowing where I was gonna go or who I was. You're just like being a kind human. And having you here today, it's so special for me. Thank you so much for coming. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me and keep killing it. All right, I'll see you on your wedding. There you go.